Welcome back to Morning Drive. In 2017, Sergio Garcia defeated Justin Rose in the first hole of a sudden death playoff to win the Masters. 18 years after finishing runner up to Tiger Woods at the 1999 PGA Championships, Sergio Garcia finally had a major championship on his resume. Some, though, believe there should be more. World Golf Hall of Fame member and two time major champion and four time European Ryder Cup captain. Tony Jacklin was asked recently to name the biggest underachiever in golf he has ever seen. His answer was Sergio. Here's what he had to say. Open quote. He's been one of the best players on the planet for the last 20 years and doesn't have much to show for it. Seve had more courage in his little finger than this lad. Don't get me wrong. Sergio has been a prolific winner, but he had the ability to win double digit majors. Trevino once said, God never gave one man everything. Garcia would be the one that jumps out to me, close quote. So Jaime, what's your reaction to those words from Tony Jacklin? Do you agree? You know, I don't agree only because I think Tony's using, number one, sort of the Tiger Woods standard. I mean, double digit majors, that's a very rare air. And, you know, to, to expect someone to get to that point, you're talking about having every element of the game and, and Sergio didn't. I mean, he had tremendous talent, great ball striker, never a great putter. That was always going to, I think, limit his ability to win a lot. He certainly won 25 times between the PGA and European Tours. That's great. But in majors, you know, putting is so important. And it was an area that he just couldn't compete with someone like Tiger. Um, and the other thing is, I don't think Sergio temperamentally had the resiliency to really overcome some of the, you know, the hardships and, and, the, and the really, you know, crushing losses that happened in a long career. Uh, he got thrown when he didn't win majors and uh, certainly when Tiger dominated him. But it, when, when Patrick Harrington beat him at, at Carnoustie, that was and, and then later at Oakland Hills, it really affected him. Uh, that's fine. That's very human. But that's not what the greatest players do. They they push on and actually take motivation from those things. To me, Sergio's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he's done very well. He's won a major. He's been on the world scene here very consistently for two decades now. I don't consider him the, the greatest underachiever in golf, far from it. I'd put someone like John Daly or Anthony Kim, for example, in terms of people who didn't really, you know, capitalize on all the incredible talent they had. Certainly, Sergio did to a greater extent. Yeah, I look, I think, think that a little bit, a, a little bit harsh, but I sort of understand where he's coming from. I mean, probably the elite end of ball strikers in the last 20 years. Now we know that you have to putt well, and considering that he's an average putter and he's won 25 times around the world in that period, you go, holy cow, how do you be considered the so-so putter and win that many times? I think with Sergio, he's such a nice, genuine person that with feelings and emotions, and when he connects with you, you really feel like you're with Sergio, you know? And I think he gets too much of that with his golf, like too much of that next shot he takes on personally. You know, he's got a massive passion for representing Europe and Ryder Cups and, and, and things that are outside of him. Faldo had a lot more mongrel, a lot more bastard, you know, in him. And that's what <laughs> made him a uh, 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 great winner at majors. I think, I think, he was, I think Sergio was a, a better ball striker, but Faldo was well more, much more rounded and much more complete. Um, you know, he's known as a great ball striker. Just mentally, he became too involved in trying to win. And sometimes winning is something you, you honestly you can't control it. And he tried to control too much. And I think the attention that came to him a lot was that you always saw clubs being banged in emotion. So we really watched him a lot more than other players. And this emotion got into our psyche on, man, he should have closed that tournament out. Or, you know, I, to win 10 majors, like Jaime said, that, that, is, that is elite. That's right up there with Tiger. Basically, you're neck and neck with Tiger. Well, half as much, but no one else comes close to that in the last 20 years. So I, understand, I agree with Tony a lot. Um, I think there was, I think two or three, maybe four majors missing. But when you're at the elite end of winning tournaments like he has, I mean, I can look in my career and go, well, I probably should have poked at least one major out or maybe two or three other PGA Tour events. Well, I mean, I'm being nitpicky here, but um, he is the real deal. He's the real deal person, certainly when it comes to interacting with us and, and sometimes a bit grumpy on course, but I'm more than happy to say he's done well. Uh, it'd be a great question to ask him. 
you know, from that perspective, Sergio globally has won 36 times in his career, including those 10 times on the PGA Tour. It does include the players. It does include that Masters. And it was all done, as Jaime noted, during the Tiger era. He's 10th all time on the money list on the PGA Tour. He's earned the most points all time for the Ryder Cup. And that's against a measure of either Europe or the United States. By every measure, Sergio had an exceptional career, except the measure of what could have been. Expectation, we know, is a heavy crown, particularly when it appears to be a player that maybe was reaping the rewards of greatness before it was necessarily fully earned from Medina in 1999. The conviction of all, presumably, I would guess him as well, was that it was never a question of if, it was a question of when, how many, and by how much. We all were consumed by the potential by a young tiger. And then we have this introduction of this fearless young matador from Spain who seemed right out of central casting as the foil, perhaps, for a historic new rivalry to usher in the new millennium. But at times, Sergio, yeah, he did seem consumed by the weight of it, grumpy as as Stuart was just saying, other times annoyed that fate did not see fit to give him the breaks uh, that his potential seemingly deserved. Inches became yards and yards became miles between what was seemingly assured and what ultimately happened and was just out of reach. Standing on his own merit, though, to me, Sergio's career was great. Against the judgment of what could have been, what should have been, that is the harshest critic of all, to that point, he didn't measure up.